state has agreed to pay thousands of dollars to a prison inmate injured in a prison van accident. But despite the payment and thousands more in medical bills, the inmate's attorney says the state hasn't learned its lesson. KITV4's Daryl Huff has the story. Daryl? You know, Paula, what could have been a minor accident became a major headache for the state and taxpayers because prison guards neglected the most basic vehicle safety rule. For obvious security reasons, detainees like these at district court today are shackled hand and foot for transport, leaving them vulnerable to an accident. In 2007, suspected robbers Scott Tenney and six other inmates were being transported in this van with the seat belts tied to the ceiling so inmates couldn't use them. This is for convenience of the guards. They're, when they're transporting inmates to and from the prison, they're under a tight schedule. So when the van rear-ended a Mercedes on Dillingham Boulevard... Scott Tenney was thrown forward quite violently and then back. The police report says the Mercedes occupants were injured, but the guards told the ambulance crew that any injuries to the seven detainees in the van would be attended to at OCCC. But Briner says Tenney's complaints of back and neck pain were ignored for five months until surgeons fused his vertebrae. I think it's six, six rods and 12 screws in his back. The state paid for Tenney's surgery and agreed to pay $149,500 for his pain and suffering. But was a lesson learned. Today, four years after the costly fender bender, the shackled inmates piled into the van without any apparent effort to strap them in. And it's in violation of state and federal law that if you're in a vehicle, you have to provide for safety harnesses. Public safety officials did not admit any wrongdoing in the settlement, which will require legislative approval. They say the inmates are supposed to be transported with seatbelts on. That's the law. Scott Tenney is still serving his 10-year sentence for robbery.